in the past, states have not played a very effective role, I would argue, um, in crafting major national legislation uh, in the energy and environment area, uh, despite the best efforts of groups that represent uh, agencies of the state that care very much about uh, having effective legislation. I know Bill Becker is going to be talking about this later, and so is uh, Ellen Peter. The, the politics of these issues are that people ignore um, uh, governors and ignore the state agencies when they actually are in the back room writing the legislation. And national environmental organizations, um, associations of various industries, regional interests that are based on um, the natural resource bases of the different states become much more important than what any governor, uh, even, a, even a terminator governor, uh, has to say about what they want to see in a federal bill. So we are uh, very intent on not only trying to continue what we've done uh, so far here in California under AB 32, but expanding it and enhancing our vision of what it takes to have an effective uh, climate program by collaborating with many different allies uh, and partners uh, in Washington to try to uh, spread the message that um, it's not just about cap and trade, it's not just about vehicle standards, it's not just about low carbon fuels or renewable energy portfolio standards, uh, it's not just about the national highway legislation and how aid uh, comes to the states, it is going to require an absolutely unprecedented comprehensive effort on all of our parts and the states are willing to step up to the plate and play our role. We are at a really critical moment, I think, right now because um, it, within this year, uh, come December, the United States under a new administration is going to be uh, going to uh, the United Nations Framework uh, Convention, this time in Copenhagen, and we will be expected to have something to say. Um, the world is waiting for that. Uh, everyone knows that until the United States comes to the table with a proposal that has the backing of uh, not just the administration but also of the Congress, there will not be uh, a, a new uh, international treaty. There will not be a, any kind of a consensus uh, as to how to move forward. And coming up with a set of policies that recognize diversity, that recognize the different places where people start from and the need to have programs that adapt to the different interests and needs of different communities, uh, but also that move everybody forward at a very rapid pace is one of the great um, policy and leadership challenges of our time. Getting it right between the states and our federal government is the first step, I believe, along that path. So the panels that are here today and the topics that they're going to be discussing could not be more timely. I really want to congratulate uh, all of you, and especially USD, on, on putting this event together and to thank you for letting me be part of it to come and listen, as well as to speak to you. And um, I'm looking forward to the rest of the program. I think I've used up my time. <laughs> so. We actually have time for questions. If there's time for questions, I will, I will take some questions. That'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.